What's up friends? Today I'm going to show you how to take Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 locally on your machine, connect it to an amazing web-based in-painting outpainting tool called Paintwa, then craft a really beautiful prompt using prompt base, load that into Paintwa, and turn you into a fire hose of creative energy, supercharging your magical power to bring your imagination to life. Let's get started. So what on earth does all of that mean? Well, it nets out to this. You can create beautiful landscape imagery, load it into Paintwa, take the original, and if you see you have a piece of the painting you want to redo, you can do a combination of in-painting and out-painting. In-painting to overwrite parts of the images, out-painting to extend the canvas further, and then have multiple iterations for you to choose from so that you can rapidly decide on a direction you want to continue working on it in your workflow. So here's a digital painting of a solar punk cityscape that I made in a previous session years ago. This one I made more recently in the same kind of theme and vein. I just love working with images of these geodesic biodomes, kind of representations of creating little habitats where you can grow all sorts of tropical food-bearing plants and things to live more sustainably. This one's obviously a lot more fantastic, has elements of fantasy with the floating island technology and people enjoying their terrace out here in the beautiful sunscape. So we're going to work with some of these images a little bit later, but this is kind of the vibe of the theme I like to work with in this imagery, and we're going to kind of explore that theme together. So why this particular subject matter? Well, I love visions of eco-paradise, these solar punk utopian cityscapes that represent the future that we will hopefully find ourselves living in not too far from now as we use AI and our collective will to solve the climate crisis and create a brighter future for us to all enjoy together. We're gonna start this journey with a really good prompt. So here is an excellent resource if you haven't seen it before, Prompt Base. It's a whole market where you can just scan and you can filter by Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion or any of the other popular tools and finding prompts that reliably produce the kind of thing that you have in mind, it just makes it that much easier and saves you that much more time than trying to kind of blindly root around in cyberspace by yourself to figure out what the right prompt is. It's a really great starting point. So I'm going to go to my account where I've purchased several prompts. These are only like two bucks, five bucks a piece, so they're really affordable. Really appreciate all the effort that goes into making these. And the one that I chose to use for this particular tutorial is the stylized city landscape. So here we've got the prompt itself. This is what's visible when you actually buy the prompt. And there's additional instructions here. So I've taken this prompt and I've copied and pasted it into my Stable Diffusion window. So even though this is running in Chrome, Stable Diffusion is currently running locally on my machine and I have taken the address, the IP address, and plugged it into Chrome and when you do that while it's running it just pops up the Stable Diffusion interface like this. And I took that prompt and I kind of replaced some of the words that are in the brackets here. That's kind of a, a convention that you'll see more and more lately. People put brackets and the idea is you can kind of replace the words in the brackets with more specific prompts to get the outcome that you're trying to achieve. So over here on my Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111, that's the interface that we're using right now, gotten from GitHub. And we have swapped in some of the new words that we want to have for specific details like the biodome buildings. We've got sunny clouds, blue sky, and now that we've plugged those in, and I've removed some of the artist names since I try to avoid doing that myself, and now that that is plugged in with the negative prompt of blurry misty foggy because these images can be kind of soft sometimes, now if I hit generate, you can see we get these cool Geodesic futuristic dome landscapes. I love it. Oh man, drawing all these things by hand for years. It is such a thrill to be able to just see it pop up in mere moments on the screen. I mean, look at that. I want to live there. Don't you want to live there? What kind of good stuff have they got going? Where's the swimming pool? Let's hit it. So, lots of fun to be had just randomly generating tons of images there. And then, what I will do next is port this into Paintwa. Cool, so we're happy with our prompt, we're happy with the output that we're getting from Stable Diffusion running locally in the browser tab. What we're gonna do now is take this prompt, now that we've tested it and seen that we're getting good results here, we're gonna take this prompt and start using it in Paintwa. 
So Painthoa is running in the browser as well, but it is taking the input from Stable Diffusion running locally. You can connect it with an API key, works great, no problem, easy to set up. Now you can see, this was the example I made in advance before the video, I can flip between these different images because what I did is I've masked out a part of this original image, like, ah, oh, it's too many trees, I don't really like all the mushy detail going on here, but because I have loaded this prompt, and particularly with this model, the dreamlike diffusion model does a really good job of making these kind of more painterly, dreamlike landscapes that I really enjoy. So I've got a variation of a model that I've bred together with another one here. And so now it's like I loaded that prompt and that model into a hose and I can just spray that hose every which way if I want to on the canvas here. So I'm going to zoom out and we can continue the image the other way to kind of show you what I mean here. So I will click and drag a rectangle. And now that I've selected that space, it will automatically start to generate a fill, what's called an outpainting, an extension of what's already there. And you can see the seam is kind of harsh right here, and that's because I haven't included the rest of the image so much. So I'm going to say no, I'm going to cancel that result. This time I'm going to draw the rectangle around part of the image as well as a transparent yet to be completed part of the image. We're going to run that. My graphics cards are humming away, generating new imagery and drawing inspiration from what's already over here on the selected part of the canvas. And you can see I have two of these going at the same time. I've got all of the saved results from these previous explorations. I like number two myself. It's a pretty cool dome. And I'm waiting for this one almost finished. And I can commit that change or I can generate another one, right? So we'll look at that now. So pretty good. We've got more of a seam visible kind of in the background here, but the tree is completing it. That's, that's a great kind of paint over of the seam with the tree and the clouds and the sky. That's looking really good. It wouldn't be a hard step to kind of fill in what seems like should be the remainder of that dome back here, right? So it's a really great starting point for a piece if I wanted to finish it. So I like that. Let's see if we get another one that we like even better. So I'll hit plus one and it's just gonna generate another iteration. Now I've got two and I can flip back and forth between them or even go back to the beginning and I still have not yet committed those changes. Let's go ahead and commit this one. I'll say check, yes. Now it's done, right? Very cool stuff, but let's say Mm, you know, I want to take another crack at this space here where the gap kind of makes it seem like there's more of a seam here in the imagery. So I am going to go to show mask where you can see this is where I masked off the part that I generated over here. I'm going to continue that mask by clicking the mask tool up in the upper left here. And with that selected, my cursor becomes a brush. I am going to paint out the part that I want the AI to reimagine for me, right? And then I'm going to come over here again, uncheck mask. I'm still showing the mask just to see the visual aid of where I've already painted. But now I'm going to go back to prompt. I can see I've, I've loaded my prompt up in here. This is where I took the original output from the stable diffusion description. And I've put that in the prompt field right here. So now with the mask off, I can draw my rectangle around any area that includes the mask and because I have the mask enabled it will only fill in the area that is masked. So we've got one, let's get another few and just see if we can get one that seems like it feels right. Since this is a small area of the image it doesn't take very long to generate more, not as processor intensive. Ooh, I kind of like that one, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna hide masks so that I can look at the results more easily. That's kind of cool. It's got the other little dome with the window poking out of it. Maybe that one looks more smoother and natural with the tree. 
Let's go with the dome one. Seems like maybe that covers the edge of the dome as though it were a cluster here. I think this looks pretty cool myself. I hope you do too. I'll move on and show you another technique next. All right, now let's look and see how this prompt affects our ability to adjust the rest of the image without painting. We want to extend the canvas further down. Let's see if we can show some more foreground, show the ground here with some lush grass and these paths people are walking on here. So using the prompt that we've got already here, I'm going to draw a rectangle and set my marquee around this area that I want it to fill. But you can see it's got this weird tiling thing going on here. Why? Because it's still filling that area with the same prompt of what I asked for. So in order to get better results, we need to get more precise in what we're asking for to fill that area. So I want it just to be the ground. So I'm going to say cut these descriptions of the trees and the buildings and the biodomes and say lush green grass with sunlight glinting we'll cut the clouds in the reference to the sky but we'll keep the shiny highly detailed realistic etc cetera, etc cetera, to try and keep some of the same vibe of the output let's try it again i'll come back here and plus one you can see it's got a counter down here to tell you how long it's gonna take to fill that space. Boom, nice meadow, looks real good. Let's see if we can do another one extending into the foreground here. Lush green wavy grass meadow. Let's see how that comes out. Plus one. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Has a wild lush natural feel. Now we can pick between the flowers or the more rough one. I like both. Okay, let's run an in-painting experiment here. So I want to kind of play with the background here, which looks a little bit janky. So I'll go to mask, with the mask on. This is the part I've masked out, but you'll see that based on the prompt that I'm using and the model that I'm using, It comes out looking kind of goofy because it's taking the prompt and kind of filling it in as though the prompt were a paintbrush. So then when I hide the mask, you can see it looks all right, but it's kind of not realistic. So I'm going to try something different instead, which is flip back over here to my automatic 1111 interface. I'm going to switch to in painting model. Now that's loaded up. I'm going to flip back to and this time I'll hit plus one and there we go it's got kind of a, a better fill in it's th not using all of the same uh, original kind of high quality prompt that we crafted this is just sort of trying to fill in the gaps between what we have but it definitely looks better as an in painting tool so when you mask out and do a fill switching to in painting as your model for Automatic 11.11, which is one of several checkpoint models that you can download, that is seeming to work better and produce better results. So that's pretty cool. I'll generate a couple more. So now we've got a few to pick between. That's the one without the in-painting model attached. Then we switch to the in-painting model. I kind of like that one. Yeah, let's go with this. I'll go ahead and commit that change. One more quick tip before we move on. When I've got a mask drawn, if I hold right click, which I'm doing on my Wacom pen right here, I can draw out the mask again so that you can get a more targeted, precise contour result or silhouette of what you want to do the in-painting with. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm gonna go ahead and export with this save floppy disk icon, lovely. And then from there, let's drop it into Photoshop. Boom. I'll go ahead and crop that. Just 
super cool. From here I can do things like use the clone stamp brush after I flatten it and rasterize it. A quick way to rasterize is to just group and then flatten with command G then command E. So now I've got my clone stamp brush picked up over here in Photoshop and I can just sample from any part of the image and then try to kind of paint into other places. So the point is is that this is the starting point. Now I can go back in and say, gosh, you know, maybe this is too blue over here, so I'm gonna kind of sample from the other part of the image and just sort of make things more cohesive and hang together a little bit more. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the results and definitely something to explore further in later videos and later tutorials. So now I wanna try something different. I wanna take one of these previous images that I've made and I want to send it to Stable Diffusion to use for image to image. So I'll go to the image to image tab. I'm going to copy the prompt from text to image. Paste. Copy the negative prompt. Paste. And then I'm going to move my original art file into image to image. So I'm going to change the dimensions of the image output. I'm going to say 1024 for the width to match the landscape look. And then generate. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But it's not clear to me that this is being very influenced by the image to image. So instead, now I want to see if it works the same with the kind of sunset version. Let's see what happens now. Wow, super cool. Damn, this is cool. So clearly it's taking the purple background imagery and applying all of the same prompts to create a whole new image with that same color scheme and overall intention. Dude, this is so rad. I love this. I love this so much. I know that there's so much heat and so much consternation in the art community and the legalities of all of this, but just imagining where we're headed in this future, this solar punk eco paradise city future that we're going to build, I am really excited for this. Let's see if we can get some floating islands. Floating islands. Got one. Nice, we got like a moon or something. Dude. There we go. Kind of a floating ship. Let's say floating arcology ship islands. There we go. Very nice. Let's see if we can push this just a little bit further, shall we? So I want to take both of these images now and plant them both in Paint Hua. So I will right click, copy image, go to Paint Hua, wipe the canvas by refreshing the page. I will paste, and then I can plant it, but you can see the canvas is much smaller because the image file is large, it's like a 3000 pixel wide image. I can zoom out by pressing Control minus, and zoom in with Control plus, you can see this is the edge of the canvas. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit more space by shrinking the canvas and then reloading. But when I go back to Stable Diffusion, I'm going to copy this image and you can see if I come back here and paste, it's a much smaller image, right? It's only 1024 pixels wide. So I'm going to quickly go over to Photoshop where I've loaded the image. I'm going to shrink the image size down in pixels to 1024. Try that. 
I'll just highlight control A, control C, flip back over here to my browser and paste. Now I've got both of these. Let's see if we can stitch them together. Okay, so now I'll zoom in again. Scroll over here. I will now drag between them So we've got some weird stitching in the seams because I didn't put the model back to in painting. Let's try that. In painting. Back to paint hua. Let's try another iteration. Okay, so we stitched them together. It's still looking a little bit janky there. But I'll zoom in and try and use the in painting features to zoom to smooth it out a little bit. So once again, go to mask. I'll do show mask. Looks like we have to commit before we can in paint, which makes sense. So I'll paint this out. Okay. Now I've got a mask I like. Let's turn mask function off so that we can get our targeting reticle back. And I will draw to select the masked components. Run. Show mask. Not bad. Let's do a couple more. So now we've got a few different selections. So that was what we started with from just stitching them together. And then with further in painting, we kind of refined it. Now that had more of a blend that has a more seamless transition as a result. I think I'll go with this one for now. I'll go ahead and commit that. And now I will zoom out, take a last look, and then export again. I will open that in Photoshop and voila. Still some cleaning up to do as you can see, but overall, I mean, to take an image and then be able to just blend more onto that image using the same style with careful application of the right prompts and models, not bad. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. I am really excited to see where these tools are gonna go over the next year. Let's keep track of it together and keep practicing and learning. Until then, my friends, Peace out.